this, looking like a, just some stoner. When the annals of history look back on this video and all the moments of all the things, people are going to laugh when they think this concept was un enveloped by this this kid, this guy who had looked like a hippie. Look at this wavelength. One, this is if this is an electromagnetic wave, one wavelength we're going to say is this long, looking at it from the side. Now when you look at this wavelength, when you look at this light from another angle, the same wavelength, the distance between is now this long, prospectively. So it went from this long to this long. That means the wavelength got shorter, and the frequency got higher, and the color changed. And that's why when you move around a prism, you see different colors. But now this is different than just color. This goes way beyond color, because the wavelength determines if it's a gamma ray, or if it's an x-ray, or if it's a microwave, or if it's visible light, or if it's sound. So depending on where you are in relation to that wavelength, you're going to experience something different than someone else who's got a different perspective of that wavelength. Always. Always. It always. Every angular change in perspective of an electromagnetic wave will change what you see. Perspective doesn't create it, but determines it. Depending on how you look at the situation is what you see. Maybe it was a little egocentric to be like when the annals of history look back on this, but this is so simple, yet the first I've ever heard it explained. I want to do it with a computer simulation and spin it, the electromagnetic wave around and get all the different perspectives, because you're always measuring it side to side when you look at it. We... If we knew we were at a different angle, we could draw it longer, but we only we can measure the, the distance it travels. So here it's this long, here it's only this long. I love you all. I hope. I hope. I know I hope. Hope Golden, who's married now, has a new name, and children, and a wonderful life. There is hope. Uh, because everything's always going out in every direction. There's no beam of light. There's only a wave of light that's existing that we get from one perspective and that we see at a certain length. So depending on how we look at the beam, we see it at a different length. But the, it, we think it's a beam. We call it a beam because we see from point to point. But it's going everywhere. It's, it's being sent out into existence. It's appearing. It's not traveling literally. It's a ripple in existence like you would see on the surface of the water. Being caused by vibrations underneath the blanket of reality. But really it's all there. We just haven't delved too much into it. Like It's like getting into the ocean and being like, ooh, the ocean. And then finally going underneath the ocean to explore underneath. We're doing that with space and time and the fabric of our reality, the things. Easier to do in space away from gravity, but still we do it on Earth in laboratories, and we can do it with our minds. We can perceptualize it when we clear our minds of all the junk, of all the secrets that cause weight, that cause gravity of their own. So I propose that it's like a beating drum. There's a beating underneath it, and depending on how it's being shaken, vibrated, it shapes into different patterns. And then there's expulsions of wave all in every direction. And where we are in relation to any particular vibration, although all the vibrations are happening all around us and all through us, so there's what you would call interference 
of waves from all angles or interaction of waves from all angles if you looked at either direction. Interaction seems a bit more proactive. So it's difficult to pinpoint one. In fact, I don't think there is one. I think it's coming from all directions. Electromagnetic wave. Is, though it seems like it's coming from the sun, I think it's coming from every direction. And the sun is a kind of a centralized unit of storing and sending out. But everything's storing and sending it out. Every piece of matter. Or every piece of matter is a representation of it being stored and sent out. This takes me to a new place. I'll watch the video and maybe add something to it. So really it's what aspect of the wave we're looking at. So when there's a wave traveling like in the form of a person, we'll say this is a person this way, and we look what aspect we see of that wave. How, because right now we can see it as this and as this, and is this, and is this, because it's going in everywhere. It's, it's traveling out. It's out from in, the center. It's, it's expanding in every direction. And how we look at it, what aspect we choose to focus in on of it, is what we will see, is what wavelength we will see. And that will determine color and value of heat. A higher frequency, lower wavelength will produce more heat. So when we look at someone, if we choose to look at from uh, the basic from side to side, maybe that's the calmest, most reserved way away from them. We'll see the, their lowest, the longest wavelength. Maybe we can we can open our perspectives so that we see no wavelength. Probably we can like focus out of the system. But when we focus in, we'll start to see the wavelength, and then we'll start to move it and see perspectives of the wavelength, and the wavelength will come together, and it will start to be high frequency, high frequency communication. And that's our feelings involved when we're communicating with someone. Depending on what aspect of them we're looking at is how we'll feel. By them, I mean anything. What aspect of anything we look at, anything, anything you choose, how you drink water, what aspect of that you see is how you will see it. And by aspect, I mean what angle you will perceive the electromagnetic wave. Or what angle of electromagnetic wave you choose to focus in on of all of the angles. But there's a diminishing effect upon a, a base wavelength if you view it from other perspectives. You can, it's the people will call it stretching, oh that's a stretch, because it diminishes the value of the overall wavelength, although it heightens the frequency. It speeds it up, but makes it smaller, relatively smaller, because there will be a lot of little hills instead of two long, big hills. This looks relatively big. So there become a lot of little bumps. And it's like, it's like cool calm is washingly effective over effective. High-pitched small is mildly effective. This would be like the dark side of the force. This would be like the light side of the force. Both are effective in accomplishing specifics, but it's how you look, it's how you... Okay, it's the diminishing effect that's, that's interesting. So if there's a situation that occurs that you see, you come upon without, without examining, you'll see... Well, I guess you'll see what you're trained to see. So the first thing you see is what you've trained your mind to see normally. Probably a lot of people see a relatively long wavelength, something in the middle, uh, a variance in the middle. Uh, 
like the word gradients, but I don't think it comes into effect here just yet. A variance. So you see what you're trained to see. So if you see this angle a lot, that's what you'll see when you approach a situation. And maybe your perception is automatically kind of skewed and you need to step back to see the purest, longest form of what you're looking at. Just to know. Not because it has to be that way, but just to know, to get a look at every angle. Then you can turn it and look at it again. I seek to come into situations like this. Unobscured, unbiased, just to see it at its longest, calmest level. And then it, turn it with my mind, with questions, with literally walking around and looking at it from different physical angles, um, thinking about it, adding what I learned to it, which gives me another turn, adding what I learned new to it, um, to kind of compound it. Then you start to see, if you look at it too long, you start to see the same kind of thing. But there's so many different wavelengths, so after a while you examine one wavelength in so many different angles, I mean, you know it so well, you can always move on to another wavelength, which could be like this, a little different, or you know what, you can keep looking at it, keep looking at that same wavelength from all the different angles, because although you look here, you, there was some here that you passed over that you didn't quite see, and now that you know this, and you're comfortable traveling there, you can travel there and let it tra travel and learn with it, learn it from every angle, like in another person, for a lifetime, spend your life learning from one person, all the different angles of one other person, of course from all, a lot of people, but really to focus on that one wavelength, that one way of being, and to watch it change and see it change, it's a beautiful thing. If I had a computer, like, diagramming this as I was talking, that would probably be more interesting than watching me being like, mm -hmm. but hopefully uh, this has brightened your day or your ideas or sparked something in you about electromagnetism or about relationships or feeling or something that opened up something. And then it was worth it. And we did it.